So this is the big one. This is what we've been building towards. It's critical path analysis. Now this video we're talking about earliest starting time or EST and latest finishing time or LFT. Now anytime you're doing a series of steps, baking a cake or just getting ready for school, you're probably subconsciously uh, engaging in critical path analysis whether you think about it or not. All right, let's get started. We're going to need a weighted activity network. All right, so here we have our network. It might look familiar if you've seen the previous video. Um, now, what are we going to look for? Earliest starting time. And the question you have to ask yourself is, what is the earliest that I can start each of these activities? Now, the best way to figure this out is through a process called forward scanning. Now, you can see I've drawn in all of these little double boxes here at each of the vertices. Now, on the left-hand box, I'm going to put what's called the earliest starting time, the earliest that the next activity can start. Now, this first double box is really, really straightforward. What's the earliest that A or B can start? Well, they can start as soon as somebody says go, right? There's, there's no predecessors here. So they just start at time zero. Straightforward. Let's follow this one for a second. When can C start? Or, another way to say it, when does... A end. A ends after eight hours, which means the C can start after eight hours. Now that's its earliest starting time. It can't start at seven hours because A won't be finished yet and A is a predecessor. Now what's the earliest that E can start? Well E has to wait until C's finished. Now C takes one hour. Now C can't start until eight hours has elapsed. So eight plus 1 is 9. It's going to take us 9 hours to get to this point, so we can put a little 9 in here. Now, uh, let's keep for... Let's, no, let's go the other way. Okay, what about B? Well, B started at the whistle, and it took 6 hours to do, so that means it takes 6 hours to get to this dot. 6. Okay, what about uh, this dot? How long does it take to get to that dot? It's going to be really, really tempting to say, well, that's easy, right? 6 plus 2 is 8. It's going to take 8 hours. But this dot represents all of the predecessors for F. And you can see this dummy activity here, which means that F can't start until A and C are done and B and D are done. So we're going to have to be really careful and look at both of those parts. 6 plus 2 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. So F can't start until 8 hours has happened, but also until 9 hours has happened. Now the larger of those two numbers is 9. Now don't think that you've got to do like 9 plus 8 is 17, because these things are happening simultaneously, so you don't have to add them together. All right, uh, let's look at this one here. Now, G can't start until we reach this dot, and we haven't reached this dot until E has happened and F has happened. So we need to consider both. All right, F starts after 9 hours. 9 plus 1 is 10. So I might write 10 in here. But E starts after 9 hours, and E takes 3 hours, and 9 plus 3 is 12. Okay, the larger of those two numbers, 10 and 12, is 12, so I can't start G until the last thing has finished, 12 hours. From here, it's going to be really straightforward. H can't start until G has finished. It took 12 hours to start G. G took 2 hours, so that's 14. And finally, it takes 1 hour to do H. H can't start until this has happened, which took 14 hours, so H, it's going to take... 15 full hours to finish this activity, whatever it is. Um, that is forward scanning. I scanned forward through the network to find the earliest starting times. All right, that was forward scanning to find the earliest starting time. Obviously, I can now use latest, uh, sorry, backward scanning to find the latest finishing time. How do we think about latest finishing time? Well, first of all, this box here is just going to be like, when the project finishes. And the project finishes after 15 hours, right? That's 
the earliest that we could possibly finish it. It's also the latest we want to finish it because we don't want to go over time. Okay. Now, what about this box? Well, this is the latest finishing time of the activities that come before that vertex if we're going to finish on time, right? Now, think about if this was, if each of these people were like, a, if each of these activities were as a person, right? If G finished at like 15, then H would have to get finished, would have to take an hour to do their job, which means that we're going to go over time. So the latest that G can finish, that G can get to here, and not annoy H, the person doing job H, is by finishing after 14 hours, finishing at the 14 hour mark. If they finish later, that's gonna be a big problem. Okay, what about here? Well, E and F, if we're gonna to get to the finishing on, to the finish line on time, we need to do two hours and three hours, right? We need to do three hours. So that means that this, these two both need to finish at the 12 hour mark. If they don't finish at the 12 hour mark, we're not gonna get this finished. Um, so we put a 12 in here. Now another way to look at it, and the best way to look at it, is this box, 14 minus two, 12. That is the latest that those two jobs can finish. And at the moment, you're probably thinking, what a waste of time. Number, 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 just copy them, right? But this is where it starts getting interesting. Uh, now look here, we have to get to this vertex at the 12 hour mark if we want to finish on time. Now E is going to take 3 hours, so we have to subtract 3 from that. The latest that C can finish is the 9 hour mark. And you're still thinking, what a waste of time, this is ridiculous. We just keep writing the same numbers in. But look here. If we want to finish on time, the latest this one can uh, finish is the 12 hour mark. Now, F only takes one hour to complete. So, the latest finishing time for D and C is 11 hours. Because as long as D finishes their job by the 11 hour mark, then F can get their job done in one hour and we'll get our 12 hours and we'll still finish in 15 days. Okay, moving, uh, let's move backwards through here. So here, uh, we have the latest that C can finish is in the nine hour mark. C takes one hour to complete. So the latest that A can complete is eight hours. And you're still thinking, well, that that is a waste of time. Okay, great. What about over here? Okay, so uh, 11, if we subtract two from 11, because that's the latest finishing time to get to this vertex, 11 minus two would be nine. All right, uh, and then here, uh, we just write in zero because that is our starting time. Um, now, what, is, what does all of this mean? This thing up the top that I kind of said, oh, look, it looks like a waste of time. We just keep writing in all the same numbers. Actually, this is the most important part because this is what we call the critical path. The critical path is the place through our network that if anyone slows down for an instant, it's gonna hold up the project. It's really important that A completes their job in eight hours and C completes their job in one hour and E completes in three and G completes in two and H completes in one if the job is gonna get completed in 15 hours. It is not critical that person B or activity B gets completed in six hours. In fact, it could get completed in nine hours and the job would still get done. It is not super, let's say B gets it done in six hours. It's not super important that D gets their job done in two hours. If D were to get their job done in five hours, we would still get to here at the 11 hour mark which means that we would still eventually finish in 15 days. So we're doing something called critical path analysis and we found the critical path. So we're getting to the 10 minute mark now and this is where I'm gonna wrap it up. 
There is a nice neat little table that I am going to draw up that sort of labels float times and things like that, uh, but I'll save that for part two uh, where we can talk about that a little bit more. But I think we've done a pretty good job here. We did some forward scanning to find the earliest starting times. We did some backward scanning to find the latest finishing times. And most importantly, we found the critical path where everybody must work at maximum capacity or the project will be delayed. That's it.